I want to tell you about 123 Ready TV. If you have an Android or a Windows device, like a phone or tablet or a computer, then this application is for you. Now, I watch movies and TV shows from all around the world almost every night. And I'm telling you, without any hesitation, this program is the best thing that I've ever purchased for 20 bucks. It is easy to install. You have to have Wi-Fi and the internet service, but if you have those things, this program is fantastic. So go to oldtimeradiodvd.com today and take advantage of this incredible product. It is the best I've ever seen. 123 Ready TV. Buy it today at oldtimeradiodvd.com. You'll be glad you did. Ill. Oh. Get you to your bed and then I'll go straight round for a doctor. No, sir. No doctor. Mr. Holmes. You hear me, Mrs. Hudson? No doctor. But there, there's Dr. Watson, sir. Surely I can fetch him. Not Watson. Not anyone. No doctors, Mrs. Hudson. No doctor. Only delirium could make Holmes turn on me, Dr. Watson, who had so often shared the adventures of Sherlock Holmes. And still, I could not bring myself to think that I was standing by his deathbed. I, I knew his great strength. But I will tell you about the dying detective. Sherlock Holmes is landlady at 221B Baker Street. Mrs. Hudson was a long-suffering woman. She had the very worst tenant in London. Incredible untidiness, undesirable characters visiting at all hours, indoor revolver practice, weird and malodorous scientific experiments, all these and the atmosphere of violence and danger which hung around him. <laughs> but his payments for her first floor set of rooms were princely, and Mrs. Hudson never interfered. In fact, I think she was quite fond of him. Certainly when she hurried into my consulting room, her anxious face told me more than words that something serious must be amiss with my old friend. Dr. Watson, sir, he's dying. Dying? Not Mr. Holmes. I don't think he'll last the day. But this is the first I've oh, heard. Oh, you must come at once, sir, or it may be too late. I've kept my cab waiting outside. But of course, immediately, just let me get my bag. And as we drive, I hope you'll tell me what on earth happened. I can tell you, Dr. Watson, he's been sinking steadily for three days. Three days? And you've only just come to me? Well, I couldn't, sir. I wasn't allowed. Allowed? No. Now, look here, Mrs. Hudson. I think I'd better have your account calmly and from the beginning, if you please. Yes, sir. Well, oh, Mr. Holmes has been working on some case down near the river at um, Rotherhive just lately. I see. Well, do you know what it is for coming in at all hours? I was just taking my lamp to go through to my bed on Wednesday night when I heard a faint knocking at the street door. I went to see who it could be. Oh, Mr. Holmes, sir. Mrs. Mrs. Hudson. Oh, whatever's wrong, sir? You are hurt. It's not hurt. Ill. Really ill. Oh. Get you to your bed and then I'll go straight round for a doctor. No. Sir. No doctor. Mr. Holmes. You hear me, Mrs. Hudson? No doctor. But there, there's Dr. Watson, sir. Surely I can fetch him. Not Watson. Not anyone. No doctors, Mrs. Hudson. No doctors. I never heard anything so incredible in my life. I tried to insist, but you know how masterful Mr. Holmes can be. Yes, but three days. Without a bite to eat or a drop to drink. What? Oh, oh I've tried so hard, sir. I'm, I'm sure you have, Mr. Hudson. But he touched nothing. Whenever I mentioned a doctor, even you, sir, mm. he made me promise again I'd do nothing. Although only this afternoon when I saw his face, I'm... I, I knew that, that he's not long for this world. Oh. I, I told him I was fetching you at once. And he allowed it? Well, I thought he didn't hear. He was so weak and listless. But when I told him again, he whispered, 
Well, it wouldn't let it be Watson, then. Well, that's something to be thankful for. I only hope we're in time. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Hudson. I'll call if I need you. Very good, sir. Uh, uh, who's, who's there? It's me, Holmes. Watson. Uh, well, Watson, we... We seem to have fallen on evil days. My dear fellow. No, no, keep back. Stand right back. Don't come here. Now, now look here, Holmes. It's for your sake, Watson. I've contracted a coolie disease from Sumatra. Very little known except that it's absolutely deadly and horribly contagious. So must keep away. Good heavens, do you suppose such a consideration weighs the knee? Even if I weren't a doctor, do you think it would stop me doing my duty to an old friend? Now, let's have a good look at you. No! Stand back! Now, see here, Holmes. If you say where you are, I'll talk to you. If you will not, you can get out. Holmes! If you will stay Holmes. with... Holmes, you aren't yourself. You're sick and helpless as a child. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to examine you and treat you. If I'm to be forced to have a doctor... At least let me have someone in whom I have confidence. You have none in me, then? In your friendship, certainly. But facts are facts. As a medical man, you're a mere general practitioner of limited experience and mediocre qualifications. Well, well, really. It's painful to say such things, but you leave me no choice. Thank you. Such a remark is unworthy of you, Holmes. It shows me very clearly the state of your nerves. Still, I will not intrude my services. But what I shall do is to summon Sir Jasper Meek or Penrose Fisher or any of the other best men in London I can collect. You mean well, Watson, but what do you or they know of Tapanuli fever? Tapanuli? What do you know of the black Formosa corruption? I've never heard of either of them. Nor, nor have your colleagues. <laughs> There are many problems of disease, many strange pathological possibilities peculiar to the East. So I've learned during some of my recent researches. It was in the course of one of them that I contracted this complaint. I assure you, Watson, you can do nothing. Oh, can't I? I happen to know, Holmes, that the greatest living authority on tropical disease, Dr. Ainstree, is in London just now. You shall have your way. Good. Only give me time to collect my strength. It's four o'clock now. At six, you can go. This is insanity. No, I must sleep. I feel exhausted. <laughs> stood for a few minutes, looking at the silent figure on the bed, and then unable to think of sitting down, I paced up and down the room. Finally, in this aimless perambulation, I came to the mantelpiece, littered with pipes, tobacco pouches, syringes, pen knives, revolver cartridges, almost everything you could think of. In the midst of all this was a small black and white ivory box with a sliding lid. It was a neat little thing, and I was just stretching out my hand to examine it more closely when... No! No, Watson, no! Hey, what? Put it down! Down this instant! Do as I say! Now, look here, Holmes, I really think... I it... hate to have my things touched. You know that I hate it. Holmes, you... you... fidget me beyond endurance. You, a doctor, you're enough to drive a patient into an asylum. <laughs> Sit down, man! And let me have my rest. <laughs> left a most unpleasant impression on my mind. Of all ruins, I reflected, that of a noble mind is the most deplorable. I sat in silent dejection until the stipulated time had passed. He seemed in his sleep to have been watching the clock as well, for it was hardly six before he began to talk with the same feverish animation as before. You will now light the gas, Watson, please. But you will be very careful that not for one instant shall it be more than half. Uh, As you wish. 
I implore you to be careful. All right. Ah, thank you. Excellent. Now you you needn't draw the blind. Now have the kindness to place some of that litter from the mantelpiece on this table next to me. Oh, very well, um. Uh, Watson, you'll you see some sugar tongs there. Here? Use them to lift that little ivory box carefully. Mm-hmm. Carefully now. Yes. Yeah. There we are. Uh, now bring it here and place it amongst these other things. Yeah. So, good. You may now go and fetch a specialist. Well, thank him for that. His name is Mr. Calverton Smith of 13 Lower Burke Street. Calverton Smith? I've never even heard the name. Possibly not. It may su- surprise you to know that the one man who knows everything about this disease is not a medical man. He's a planter. An outbreak of this disease upon his plantation caused him to study intensely. It will be the only He's a very methodical man. And I asked you not to go before six because I knew you wouldn't find him in his study until then. Oh, I, I, I never heard of a foolish. You would yes. tell him exactly how you've left me. A dying man. A dying man. Uh, my my life depends on him, Watson. But but you will have to to plead with him to plead? come here. There, there, there's no good feeling between us. He has a, a grudge. Mm. I rely on you to soften him. Beg him, Watson. Pray him. But get him here by any means. He can save me. Oh, only he. Oh, very well. I'll bring him in a cab. Even if I have to carry him down. You do nothing of the sort. What? You will. Persuade him to come. And then you will return before him. Why? Make any excuse so as not to come with him. Now, don't forget that, Watson. No, no, of course. You you won't fail me. I'm going, Holmes. (laughs) Say no more. I'm going. My dear sir, uh, kindly take a chair. Uh, thank you. Holmes, ill, you say? Desperately. I only know Mr. Holmes through some uh, business dealings we've had, but I have every respect for his talents and character. He is an amateur of crime, as I am of disease. Mm-hmm. For him, the villain. Uh, for me, the microbe. There are my prisons, Doctor. Uh-huh. Those jars on the table there. I see. Amongst those gelatine cultivations, some of the very worst offenders in the world are now doing time. It is on account of your special knowledge that Mr. Holmes wishes to see you, Mr. Smith. See me? He has a very high opinion of you. He thought you were the one man in London who could help him. And why should Mr. Holmes think I can help him? Your knowledge of Eastern diseases. But uh, why should he think that this disease which he has contracted is Eastern? Well, uh, it it seems likely. He's been working amongst Chinese sailors down in the docks. Hmm. Uh, How long has he been ill? About three days. Is he delirious? Occasionally. Ah, this sounds serious, Doctor. It is indeed. It would be inhuman not to answer his call. I very much resent any interruption to my work, but on this occasion, I will come with you at once. Thank you, but I have another appointment. Oh, uh, very well, then. uh, I will go alone. Thank you. Uh, number 221B Baker Street, isn't it? That's correct. Then you can rely on my being there within uh, half an hour. Well, did you see him, boss? He'll be here soon, Holmes. Took me some minutes to find a cab, but... Uh, <laughs> did he ask what ailed me? Yes, I, I told him about the Chinese out of the docks. Uh, exactly. <clears throat> well, Watson, you've done all a good friend could... You may now disappear from the scene. Disappear? I, I want to hear what he says. I want to hear every word of this medical expert's opinion. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Of course. I, I think you will just find room behind the head of my bed. What, Hyde? I have reasons to suppose that his opinion will be much more frank and valuable 
if he imagines he's alone with me. Listen, that's probably him now. Then, then get behind the bed, Watson. And don't budge whatever happens. Right. Whatever happens, you hear? Oh, all right. Just listen. Don't speak. Don't move. Just listen with all your ears. Oh, very well. As you wish. <sighs> So, Holmes, mm. it's come to this then. Oh, uh, Smith, Smith, is that you? I, yes. I hardly dared hope you would come. I should imagine not. And yet you see I'm here. Coals of fire, Holmes, coals of fire. Noble of you. Yes, isn't it? I, uh, I appreciate your special knowledge. Then you're the only man in London who does. Do you know what is the matter with you? Same as young Victor, your nephew. Ah, then you recognize the symptoms. Yes. Well, then it's a bad lookout for you. Poor Victor was a strong, hearty young fellow. But a dead man on the fourth day. As you said at the time, it was rather surprising that he should contract an out-of-the-way Asiatic disease in the heart of London. A disease of which I have made such a very special study. And now you, Holmes. Singular coincidence, hmm? Or are you going to start making accusations once again about cause and effect and so on? Hi. I knew you caused Victor Savage's death. Did you? Oh. Well, proving it is a different matter, Holmes. Uh, but what do you think of yourself? Spreading lying reports about me one moment, then crawling to me for help the next? Uh, oh, Nick, cure me. And I promise to forget. Forget what? About Victor Savage's death. Oh, well. You as good as admitted just now that you had done it. I swear I will forget. <laughs> forget it. Remember it. Do as you like. <laughs> I don't see you in any witness box, Holmes. <laughs> Quite another shape box, I assure you. <laughs> but first, how did you get this disease? Working amongst Chinese sailors. Down at the dock. Cloud of your brains, aren't you? Think yourself smart? Oh. Well, you've met a smarter one this time. Mm. Ah. <laughs> Getting painful, is it? Uh, uh, it takes you as a, a cramp, I fancy. Uh, yes, it's cramp. Uh, well, you can still hear me. Now, can you remember any unusual incident <laughs> just about the time your symptoms began? I, 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 I can't think. I, my mind is gone. Help oh, Did anything come to you through the post, for instance? By post? A little box, perhaps? Uh, uh, Listen, Holmes. You <laughs> shall hear me. Don't you remember a box? A little ivory box? It came on Wednesday. You opened it. Do you remember? Yes. yes I opened it. Ah. There was so something sharp inside. I pricked my finger. Ah. Some sort of joke. It was no joke, Holmes. You fool! Who asked you to cross my path? If you'd only left me alone, I would never have hurt you. The box. Yes, this one. Huh? Here on the table. Ah, by George, so it is. Well, it leaves this room in my pocket. And there's your last shred of evidence gone. But you have the truth now, Holmes. You can die knowing that I've killed you. You knew too much about what happened to Victor Savage, so you must share his fate. No. Yes, Holmes. Uh, ah, you're very near your end now. I'll sit here and watch you die. It's getting so dark. I can't see. Smith. Smith, are you there? Yes. I guess. Oh. For pity's sake, turn up the gas. Ah, the shadows begin to fall, do they, Holmes? Yes, I'll turn up the gas for you. I can watch your face more plainly, then. 
there. Now, is there any further service I can render you? If you please, a cigarette and the match. What? Uh, uh, what's the meaning of this? The best way of successfully acting a part is to be it. What? I give you my word that for three days I have neither tasted food nor drink. You, you mean you, you... But it was the lack of tobacco I found most irksome. Ah, oh, here are some cigarettes. Ah, oh, and some matches, too. Ah, oh. mm. That's better. You devil. You absolute devil. Hello, hello. Do I hear the step of a friend? What? Mr. Holmes? Inspector Morton, all is in order, and this is your man. Oh, what is the meaning of this? Calvin Smith, I arrest you on the charge of the murder of one Victor Savage. Uh, and I must warn you that anything you, you say... You've got nothing on me. It's all a trick. It's a pack of lies. Keep yourself. You get yourself a well, Get, get Put away. Put the cuffs on him, Constable. Uh, no. Yes, uh, By the way, Inspector, you might add the attempted murder of one Sherlock Holmes to that charge. Don't listen to him. And Inspector. you'll find a small box in the right-hand pocket of your prisoner's coat. Mm-hmm. Uh, they leave it on the table here. Handle it gingerly, though. It may play its part at his trial. Trial? Uh, you'll be the one in the dock, Holmes. Inspector, he asked me to come here to cure him. He was ill, and I was sorry for him, so I came. Now he'll pretend I've said anything he cares to invent that will corroborate his insane suspicions. Well, you can lie as you like, Holmes. My word's as good as yours. Good heavens! I'd completely forgotten him. Uh, forgotten who, sir? Watson, my dear fellow, mm. do come out. Oh. Oh, oh, what the devil are you doing? I owe you a thousand apologies. <sighs> to think that I should have overlooked you. Oh, it's all right, Holmes, just a bit cramped. That's all. What is all this? Oh. I need not introduce uh. you to Mr. Culverton Smith, since I understand you met somewhat earlier in the evening. You, you, you mean you... Had all this planned? Of course, to the last detail. I think I may say it worked very well. With your assistance, Smith, of course. Mine? You saved an invalid trouble by giving my signal to Inspector Morton waiting outside. <laughs> what? You turned up the gas. Yes. Uh, I'd better no. take it along now, sir. No. <laughs> we'll see you down at the yard presently, perhaps. Very well, Inspector. Oh. And many thanks. Well, uh, <laughs> well, what, sir? There's a bottle of carrot on the chest of drawers over there. Good. It's uncorked. It's a- and some biscuits in a tin. If you'll be so kind, I'm badly in need of both. <laughs> Certainly. You know, Holmes, all oh, this seems a pretty elaborate way to go about catching that. Oh. Uh, mm. I mean, taking in mm. Mrs. Hudson and me like that, scaring us half to death. <laughs> well... It was very essential that I should make Mrs. Hudson believe in my condition. She was to convey it to you and you to him. Yes, but all the same... Now, don't be offended, my good Watson. You must admit that among your many talents, dissimulation scarcely finds a place. If you'd shared my secret, you'd never have been able to impress Smith with the urgent necessity of coming to me. No, I suppose not. You see, it was the vital point of the whole scheme. I knew his vindictive nature... And I was certain he'd come to gloat over his handiwork. But, but your appearance, Holmes, your face, you... You really do look ghastly. <laughs> Three days of absolute fast does not improve one's beauty, Watson. <laughs> For the rest, there's nothing that the sponge won't cure. <laughs> Vaseline to produce the glistening forehead, belladonna in the eyes, rouge over the cheekbones, and crusts of beeswax around one's lips. That's what you could... And why wouldn't you let me near you? There was no risk of infection. Oh, can you ask me, my dear Watson? Yes, I can. Do you imagine that I've really no respect for your medical talents? Uh, or that your astute judgment would be deceived by a dying man with no rise of pulse or temperature? Uh, At four yards' distance, I could deceive you. Oh, uh, this, this box there. No, Watson. I wouldn't touch it. You can just see if you look at the side yeah. where the sharp blade emerges as you open it. Huh? I dare say it was by some such device that poor young Savage was done to death. He stood between that monster and an inheritance, you know. Then it's true, Holmes. You, you, you might have been killed, too. As you know, my correspondence is a varied one. I'm somewhat on my guard against any packages which reach me. <laughs> but I saw that by pretending that he'd succeeded in his design, I might be enabled to surprise a confession out of it. That pretense... I think I may claim to have carried out with the thoroughness of a true artist. You certainly did, Holmes. Uh, 
some more biscuits? No, thank you, Watson. Let us preserve our appetite. When we've finished at the police station, I think something nutritious at Pagani's would not be out of place. Yes. Let's start with a couple of dozen oysters. <laughs> <laughs> Dying Detective was another story of Sherlock Holmes from the inspired pen of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. In real life, I'm an actor, and my name is Norman Shelley. My old friend, Carlton Hobbs, played the part of Sherlock Holmes, and I was Dr. Watson. The production was by the British Broadcasting Corporation from London. Script by Michael Hardwick. I hope I may look forward to the pleasure of your company again before very long for more of the adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Thank you.